and welcome to another Lakehead International live webinar. Today we are doing a Faculty Friday with the Faculty of Education. Um, before we get started though, um, I'll chat briefly about the Lakehead International live series, chat about wh what we've done and where we're going with it too. Um, so previous this week on Monday we met up with the Academic Support Zone. On Tuesday we met up with a current student each hen who's studying in the education program as well as concurrently studying a chemistry degree. On Wednesday, of course, we did our regular meetup with our undergraduate and graduate admissions teams, discussed quite a bit. Um, and then on Thursday, we met up with Jonathan, who is a current student in biotechnology. So we chatted about his journey at Lakehead, his journey from Mexico, all sorts of things. Um, all of those recordings are already on our YouTube channel. Um, you can visit our YouTube channel, it's just Lakehead University, and our playlist you're looking for is Lakehead University, pardon me, Lakehead International Live. Um, the Thunderwolf Tuesday and Thursday both are actually also on our IGTV, so if you head over to Lakehead International, that Instagram already has those as well. Upcoming this Monday, we'll be uh, meeting up with our undergraduate admissions team and we'll be chatting about how to apply to an undergraduate program. So if you are a student that's uh, not yet applied to Lakehead or if you even know a friend who's still interested, there are a number of programs still open. Um, to apply to so we encourage you to certainly check out that webinar and we're going to do a walkthrough actually a step-by-step -step of the online application as well as chat about updates to our admissions processes documents all sorts of stuff um, without further ado though um, we'll we'll introduce our special guest but first for those of you who haven't joined over the last few months uh, my name is Jordan Ball I am the international new and social media officer here at Lakehead University that means that I help oversee social media, live events, the Global Ambassador Program, and quite a bit more. Um, but I'll pass over to Patrick to introduce himself as well. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. My name is Patrick Carr. I am one of the international recruitment officers here at Lakehead University. Um, I typically work with students who are in the Middle East, Africa, as well as the Caribbean, but I'm happy to be here today to answer any questions uh, for all students and for my colleagues who are based around the world. Awesome, thank you so much, Patrick. And last but not least, I'll pass it over to Dr. Wayne Melville uh, to introduce himself. Yes, yeah, so good, good morning and, and thank you, Jordan. Uh, so my name's uh, Dr. Wayne Melville. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Education and I've been at Lakehead now for 15 years after we moved here from Australia. And my background uh, was as a high school science teacher and then I looked after science education uh, within the faculty and the last year I, I was appointed as the Dean. So uh, welcome to today's webinar and you know, if you've got any questions, by all means, ask them. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. We're definitely excited to dive into the entire faculty. I know uh, as a Dean, you have an extremely busy schedule. So uh, personally, I want to thank you for joining us. But of course, I know our viewers are also thankful for the time with you. Um, chatting a bit about what we're going to cover today. So we're going to do a brief overview of Lakehead University as um, an entire institution. Of course, we'll chat about the Faculty of Education. We'll talk about program highlights, program offerings, pardon me, program highlights and unique learning opportunities, as well as some of our success stories with alumni. Of course, uh, throughout today's session, uh, we certainly encourage you to ask questions. Uh, myself and Patrick can answer Lakehead general questions, international specific questions. And if you do have uh, any related to your actual program within education or anything related that uh, Dr. Wayne Melville can answer, we'd be happy to do that. If you're joining us on Zoom, you can use the Q&A function to submit those questions. If you're joining us over on Facebook Live, you can use the comment section there and we'll have our Lakehead experts behind the scenes address those questions. If you are watching this as a recording as well, over on Facebook or YouTube, either one, if you submit that comment to us, we will still receive the notification and we'll certainly get back to you in a timely manner. Uh, and that, that's a good uh, segue into my next point. If you like what you see today, or for example, if you're not able to stay for the whole session or you join late even, um, you don't need to worry because we do have the recording up on our YouTube within a few hours after typically. And last but not least, I always encourage you to stay connected with us on social media. We're uh, our international channels. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and those of you joining from China, we're also on Weibo, WeChat, and Yoku. Um, you'll, you'll explore our posts. Uh, we always make major announcements on social media, but we also provide sneak peeks and previews into university life. 
Uh, so it's always great to stay connected with our audience members. So chatting a bit about Lakehead, um, Lakehead University is a fully comprehensive university in Ontario, Canada. So we are actually quite proud to be recognized as the number one undergraduate research university in Canada. Um, I know that is due in part, of course, to the Faculty of Education, and we will definitely chat about the research opportunities within those programs and whatnot. Um, but if you do have any more questions with regards to research opportunities, or you'd like to learn more about that, you can always connect with us after the fact, or I do encourage you to, of course, explore our website, lakehead.ca um, forward slash international. Another thing that we're really proud to be recognized about is that uh, we are recognized as Canada's top 10 universities for primarily undergraduate studies. So this is a really another proud ranking for us because there are many competitive universities within Canada and to be held with such high regard is so important for us uh, and really recognizes our uh, efforts putting, that we are putting forward. And last but not least, uh, something that we uh, are, again are ranked and very proud about is that we are among the top universities ranked by Times Higher Education for the entire world. So I know that that uh, was actually a study reviewed with over a thousand universities and uh, we are in the top half of that. So we're very excited about that. Um, chatting a bit about academics at Lakehead. I know it's a really broad field. I know uh, within education, especially if you're pursuing a concurrent education, your programs will be a part of uh, potentially multiple faculties. So I'll, I'll run through the list quite quickly here. Um, we do have a faculty of business administration, engineering, science, environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law, medicine, and graduate studies. So I actually am a graduate of the faculty of business administration. Um, Patrick, I believe you are a graduate of the social sciences and humanities, if I'm not mistaken. That is um, and, correct. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. And of course, like we've mentioned and uh, why you're here today, we are going to be diving into the Faculty of Education. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know that, of course, when you're looking at some of those options such as teachables or maybe looking into minors, um, we have a breadth of a knowledge here today uh, from past experience and alumni. So I'll pass it over to Dr. Wayne Melville to kind of do an introduction to the Faculty of Education, um, and then we'll move into the program offerings after that, okay? Uh, thanks, Jordan. Uh, so the Faculty of Education uh, is located both in the Aurelia and Thunder Bay campuses uh, of Lakehead University. We've been in Aurelia uh, since the beginning, back in 2009, and we've been in Thunder Bay since 1962. Uh, originally, we were the Lakehead Teachers College uh, and so, you know, we have a very long uh, and proud tradition of uh, working in the education sector uh, and many of our graduates uh, have gone on to work both in schools uh, as administrators uh, within schools and school boards uh, with the Ministry of Education and also increasingly internationally as well. And so we're, we're very proud of that tradition and we're working very hard to uh, build on it. Uh, our faculty is fully accredited by the Ontario College of Teachers. Uh, we just completed that accreditation uh, last year and that runs for the next uh, seven years. And that accreditation is, is really important because it means that our graduates uh, in uh, primary, junior and intermediate senior uh, teaching uh, are actually uh, eligible to be certified by the College of Teachers to be, uh, become fully registered to teach in Ontario and then across Canada and also because of our accreditation uh, our students are actually uh, highly regarded overseas and so every year we have a number of our alumni teaching overseas uh, including uh, places such as uh, the United Kingdom, we've got people in uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Malaysia, Colombia, uh, basically every continent you can uh, you can name we've got someone there and so uh, we, we keep in contact with them uh, and and follow their progress uh, with, with a lot of pride. As a faculty, we are committed to teaching and learning because that is what we do and, and I believe we do it very well. Uh, both our full-time faculty and contract lecturers are all uh, completely committed to uh, looking after students and making sure that uh, everything we can do to ensure your success, you know, we do do and, and we back that up with uh, our 
administrative team who do a wonderful job in making sure things like enrollments and registrations and progression throughout, through our program uh, is as smooth as possible. Uh, but faculty of education is not just about uh, teaching, it's also about research. Uh, and we have uh, a number of departments. We have a graduate studies and research department, an undergraduate education department, and also a Aboriginal education department as well. And so the full-time faculty within each of those departments uh, are also researchers within their field. And so we have leading researchers in in math education, in science education, in indigenous education, uh, and also in, uh, in environmental education as well. And so uh, all our researchers are published regularly in, in the top journals uh, in their fields, uh, and, we, and we support them in, in that work. Uh, as I said before, we have an increasing international reach over the last five or six years. We've put a lot of work into uh, uh, recruiting students overseas and then of course supporting them and so um, we, we go out of our way to support uh, people through uh, working with with them in terms of uh, language making sure people feel at home working with uh, student support services and Lakehead International uh, to make sure that uh, people who come here uh, are really looked after during their time here. Uh, so Jordan I think that's a fairly brief synopsis of, of who we are so if you wish to begin, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you so much for that. And um, something I'd like to echo also, as I know you mentioned that uh, our, our reach within our alumni, so where some of our graduates are going and teaching is kind of spans the entire world and obviously staying connected with them is a really important part of sharing the Lakehead story. Um, and I know that your, your faculty also um, publishes a newsletter. I'm not sure if it's annual or semi-annual. Um, but I, I've read it myself a number of times and the stories that are shared within that newsletter really speak to the educational experience that uh, the faculty is able to provide and also the unique learning opportunities that kind of um, guide and also shape someone's uh, teaching methods and their methodology and whatnot. So it's really great to read those stories and see the reach that we're, we're getting across the world too. So, so we can actually help you out with that one. It actually comes out uh, in January and May and September. Uh, and if anyone's interested in, in reading uh, all the back issues, uh, if you go to the Lakehead uh, website and this uh, search for education exchange, uh, that will bring that up. And yeah, we've got five, yeah, five years of uh, back issues on there. Uh, the latest one was just come out in May and the next one is scheduled for September. Awesome. And then diving into the program offerings, I know this is kind of the, the meat of the presentation. People want to know um, what the studies will be like, what sort of courses they'll be taking, all that sort of stuff. So once again, I'll pass it over to you, to, uh, Dr. Melville, to chat about some of the undergraduate programs and the professional programs. Uh, and to our viewers, we will certainly cover the graduate programs as well. Uh, they are a few slides ahead though, so we'll, we'll need some time to get there. Okay, thanks. Uh, so with the concurrent education uh, programs, so we've got the Honours Bachelor and the Bachelor's Degree programs, uh, basically when you enrol in those programs, you're actually enrolling in two degrees. So if you're reasonably certain you want to be uh, a teacher, then these are the best uh, programs to be in because you're actually guaranteed a, a place in the education program after you've finished your initial degree. And so you would enroll in a Bachelor of Science or uh, Bachelor of Arts uh, in, in the area that you're interested in uh, and then pursue those uh, programs. Uh, the difference between the Honours and the Bachelor's program, Honours uh, degree is four years and the Bachelor's program is three years. Uh, and when you enter the workforce, the, the main difference is you simply start higher on, on the salary scale. So it's always good to have the honours degree in your, in your background. Uh, during those three or four years of study, uh, there are three education courses which you take as part of your undergraduate degree. Uh, and one of those actually puts you back in a school, uh, either in Aurelia or Thunder Bay. Uh, just to confirm that you're making the right choice uh, in the direction you're looking at going. Uh, one thing that uh, a lot of people find interesting is 
we actually have a series of accelerated programs. So you can actually enroll in an honors uh, bachelor program uh, and then complete a four year honors degree in three years, which means you could actually complete the entire concurrent program uh, in five years. And so they're available in chemistry, biology, uh, English history, and now kinesiology, uh, geography, and we're working on psychology and sociology as well. And so if, as I said, if you're interested in, in uh, going into teaching, then the current program is uh, the one for you. The professional program, if you already have an undergraduate degree and uh, you, you have the average of 65%, then the professional program is a two year program, uh, either in the primary junior or intermediate senior. Uh, and the primary junior is available both in Thunder Bay and in Aurelia and the intermediate senior is available in, in Thunder Bay. And basically that prepares you to be certified by the Ontario College of Teachers uh, to teach across Ontario, across Canada, or indeed across the world. Uh, if if you're coming through the concurrent program after you've finished the undergraduate degree, then you actually just transfer straight into the professional program. Uh, and so that, that uh, change is completely seamless. Uh, the professional programs, uh, as we'll see later on, uh, there are practica built into those and those practica can be both in Ontario and uh, across Canada and across the world. So Jordan, can we move on? Sure. So we do have a question here from a student. Um, can I complete my graduate degree in education or semesters? Um, so that would depend. I'm assuming that they're looking at the master's of education graduate degree. Um, you would have more knowledge about what help, the length of that program. So I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, yes, you can. Uh, the master of education program is, uh, a, as George said, we'll come back to this later. Uh, is you, you need to take 10 courses so yes you can finish it in in four semesters it, it would be a fairly heavy workload but you you could do it so uh, when we get to the master's program we might uh, have a bit closer look at that for sure so the next slide i have here is actually diving into the primary and junior and then of course we'll dive into the ppod after this as well so um, I'll, I'll pass it over to you again to chat about primary junior and chat about the points on the screen here for our viewers. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, so, so primary junior, uh, one of the uh, good things at the moment is that there is a looming teacher shortage, both in primary junior and intermediate senior. Uh, if we go back a few years ago, there was uh, an oversupply of teachers and so getting full-time jobs was difficult, uh, but that's now changed. And so, uh, Looking over the next five to seven years, uh, there will be a need for uh, teachers across Ontario and increasingly across Canada as well. Uh, so the primary junior program equips you to teach uh, from kindergarten to grade six uh, there. Uh, if you come in with the concurrent program, uh, there are a number of, of courses that we ask you to complete, for example, in, in science, uh, visual arts, uh, language, which could be English, French, or an indigenous language, uh, and also preferably some math as well because uh, primary junior teachers are going to be teaching uh, their kids uh, in a range of areas and so the wider background you have in your subjects then the better off you will be as a, as a teacher. Uh, one of the things which makes us different to every other institution in Ontario is our math competency test. Uh, with this it is set at a grade uh, 7 level and we require you to pass this with a 75% mark because the, all the evidence that we have is that uh, teachers who have been through our program and can pass this test are actually better at teaching math than those who haven't. Uh, now, some people have a math phobia, we understand that, and so uh, there are actually four attempts uh, that you can have at this test. Uh, and if you're not successful, then we have a range of different supports built into our program to help you uh, because uh, really we want people prepared to go out and, and teach uh, who, who are confident in, in their content knowledge and their abilities to teach, especially math, which is one of the Ministry of Education's uh, main focus areas at the moment. Uh, that test is actually different from the Ontario Provincial Math Test. Uh, 
but the early evidence we have is that uh, students in our program, when they come to the provincial test, are actually doing very well. So, uh, yeah, we do we do pride ourselves on that competency test. Um, just so you're aware, it does exist. Uh, the PPOD program is uh, where we actually run classes within elementary schools, both in uh, Aurelia and Thunder Bay. And the way it works is uh, rather than spend all your time on campus, uh, we assign you to a school and you go and work uh, in that school uh, for over, over a course of a year. Uh, and the idea is it gets, gets you used to working with uh, students uh, and then you know, making sure that it is the right career choice for you uh, and also gets you working with teachers because the Bachelor of Education program you know, will help you get into the profession. But one of the things which uh, we like to do is introduce you to uh, your colleagues in the teaching profession because they're going to be the people you're going to be working with and they're going to be the people you're going to be learning from. Uh, so next we have a question come up from, from Kaylin. Uh, do you have practice tests online? What is the earliest I complete this exam? Uh, yes, if you go to the uh, Lakehead page, go to the Faculty of Education and put in math competency tests, there are practice uh, tests and questions online there. Uh, the earliest you can complete the exam is uh, basically we do it in the first week uh, of the September uh, or fall semester. And so that, that's the that's the earliest that can be done. Awesome, good. Right. Um, and then I, I know uh, you mentioned already that the primary junior is offered at both the Thunder Bay and Aurelia campus. Um, so moving on from there, um, chatting about intermediate senior, which is um, select to Thunder Bay. I'll, I'll let you cover kind of the, what the difference is between those two programs, and then of course this we'll, we'll dive into the teachables as well. Okay, so yeah. Thanks. Uh, so the intermediate senior basically to help uh, pay you for grade seven through to grade 12. Uh, a lot of most of the people who, who choose this stream are actually looking at being high school teachers. Uh, and so uh, in, in these classes, basically you specialize in two areas that you want to uh, uh, really go and, and teach. And so the, the list of teachables, uh, I think they're coming up on a later slide. Uh, basically, these are the subjects which you enjoy yourself because we all know that uh, if uh, if you enjoy doing something, then you guarantee to be pretty much better at it than if you don't enjoy it. And so, uh, through your undergraduate degree, uh, if, for example, you're interested in being a geography and history teacher, you would need to take uh, geography courses up to and including the third and fourth year levels, uh, and are the same and with history as another teachable again you need to uh, teach um, sorry take courses up in the third or fourth year level as well uh, where it talks about uh, five fces basically you'd be looking at, at 10 courses in in your first teachable and then at least six in your second uh, so the way it works with intermediate senior is that you choose the two teachables that you would like to do and then uh, there are core subjects for both the primary junior uh, and intermediate senior and then in intermediate senior you actually specialize in learning how to teach uh, your teachable subjects and so before I became Dean I used to look after the biology and general science classes and so I'd be prepared responsible for preparing uh, biology teachers to be ready to go into the classrooms uh, so we have a question from Anonymous. Uh, if few students join online classes for fall intake due to pandemic, then will it affect on fee? Uh, for university fees, um, maybe Jordan or Patrick might be able to answer that one. I can certainly um, answer that one, yeah. So, so with our fees for the upcoming semester, fall 2020, those, those tuition fees have already been announced. So if you visit lakehead.ca forward slash tuition, uh, you can view those fees. Uh, speaking directly to this question, I think the, uh, it, it speaks to more if there's fewer students than what we're typically used to joining the class, uh, will there be any changes to the fee structure to make up for that? Uh, and there won't be. So we won't charge you more simply because we have less students joining. Um, and, and right now we actually, we already have the numbers coming in. We see that there's still lots of students uh, actually quite a regular number of students 
planning to come this fall. Um, we've already spoke to what the online learning models will look like and I know um, Dr. Wayne Melville will uh, also be, he's been working quite hard behind the scenes with the rest of his faculty to develop those models and develop exactly how courses will be delivered specific to the, the learning outcomes, the required learning outcomes. But to, to loop back again, um, if there are fewer students than normal, um, the fees will not be changing for this fall. Uh, they've already been posted online. Uh, with regards to ancillary fees, so they're not related directly to your tuition. They pay for stuff um, that you use in ancillary census. So for example, there's a fee for the athletic facilities. There's a fee for uh, library upgrades. Those fees are currently with our senior management team, as well as the Lakehead University Student Union. They're working together to reevaluate those fees to see if there are any that um, aren't necessarily applicable to students that are going to be in an, a remote online learning model. Um, so we hope to hear back from those teams uh, in the near future to hear and see uh, exactly what those ancillary fees will look like. But once again, the, the tuition fees themselves have already been posted and you can visit lakehidu.ca forward slash tuition to view those. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Jordan, yeah. I just might, I might want to add just real quick. It's probably a good time to direct students to our uh, our coronavirus FAQs. Um, recently, the senior management team did release a number of answers to a lot of the common questions students have during this time. Um, and to sort of view those questions, if you go to our lakeheadu.ca forward slash about forward slash coronavirus uh, page, um, you will find a, a bunch of updated frequently answered questions uh, and a lot of these questions students have will the answers will be there so I'd encourage any of our applicants or anyone thinking of applying today to take a look uh, about uh, at those questions and I know Jordan just posted the link in our, our chat so do feel free to take a look at that page so, uh, sorry. Th th thanks Patrick um, one other thing which ties back into that um, uh, a number of our courses have ancillary fees attached to them as well and at the moment we're just going through and reviewing those so uh, since a number of those courses will be online uh, you know we'd be looking at dropping that or suspending those fees for a year as well so um, that, that decision is still to be made but we're working on it at the moment so. Awesome. So um, I do have the teach tools on the screen. If you wanted to speak to those that we have a, another question in there, I just want to read the question first to see if we might want to connect with this applicant after the fact, uh, as it is a very unique question. So uh, I'll pass it over to Dr. Wayne Melville to speak to the teach tools for now. Okay. So uh, the, the teach tools, they're actually set by the Ministry of Education in, in Ontario. Uh, and as you can see, there's a fairly broad range there. Uh, there are very few exceptions that you can actually choose to do uh, any two of these. Uh, social sciences general, uh, a lot of people ask what that involves. Uh, that, that covers uh, courses in, for example, sociology and psychology and philosophy, which don't actually have, have teachables, but you can actually count those towards social sciences uh, general, which is a subject which is taught in schools. Uh, if you have a look at that list, uh, at the moment, the main, the main areas of demand for teachers in the intermediate senior division are actually in the math uh, areas and all of the sciences, so biology, chemistry, physics, and general science. Uh, French is in a dire situation, so if, if you've got a, a French uh, language background, that might be a good one to consider and also the uh, indigenous languages uh, because we are we are short across Ontario and especially northwest Ontario for people who can teach uh, native languages uh, and so with these teachables you uh, through both uh, both years of the professional program uh, you do spend time learning how to teach these uh, particular subjects uh, so if we just go to the question um, I'm a social studies secondary school teacher in my country with a BSc sociology with a psychology minor and a master's degree in business administration. What teachable subjects would I qualify in in the intermediate senior program? Uh, so the first part of that question, we would need to have a look at your transcripts uh, to see what co undergraduate courses you actually have, uh, which would fit in with the teachables. Um, so sociology and a psychology minor, 
I would suggest probably social sciences, uh, but that's only second teachable. And so we need to have a look at the transcript for uh, the first teachable. So yeah, if, if, uh, if you're interested, by all means, send it to us and we can have a look at it. Uh, the second part of the question, if I don't qualify for any teachables, do you uh, or grant a conditional offer on the required courses for a teachable to complete? Teachable to be completed within the consecutive B ed. Um, the short answer to that one is no. Uh, the entrance requirements into the professional program is that you have to have uh, an undergraduate degree uh, and the courses needed for teachables uh, before you come into the professional program. For sure. And to speak to that also, I know um, on Monday, actually, we'll be meeting up with our international undergraduate admissions officer, Natalie, um, and we'll be walking through that application process. So uh, to speak to that a little more, um, you can certainly join us on Monday and you can ask her. So, for example, uh, after you do connect with us after the fact, send us your transcripts. We'd be happy to review those to see if uh, you do line up with teachables and that you'd be able to enter directly into the consecutive education program. For example, if you weren't able to, there are still opportunities where you can do uh, course upgradings. You don't necessarily need to enter into a full undergrad. You don't need to complete four years again, but you can get the missing courses that you would require to then enter into the consecutive education program. So once again, I do encourage you to join us on Monday to meet up with uh, Natalie, our undergraduate international admissions officer, as well as myself and Patrick will be, of course, co-hosting uh, that webinar as well. Thanks, Jordan. Okay, so uh, anonymous, uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a teaching license with condition, then I have to complete one more teaching subject. Uh, so I'm going to take a, a punt here. If it's in Ontario, then one option would actually be to enroll in a, uh, an additional qualification course, which the Faculty of Education uh, offers, and that would actually give you uh, the certification to teach uh, that, that course, so, yeah. oh, sorry, that subject. So we would, yeah, again, we would need to uh, have a look at your transcript. Uh, to follow up with an additional qualification, if you have a look at the uh, Faculty of Education webpage and then go to the Professional Development in Education uh, site, uh, that would give you the information which you could then look up and then contact uh, those people and they would be more than happy to have a look into what would actually work for you. Uh, the second part, if I do MED, then will it be beneficial for me completing that condition or would I have to join separately for that? Um, the MED would not actually uh, address the condition because the MED is seen as a graduate degree and the conditions are usually attached to undergraduate degrees. Um, to come into the MED, uh, you do need to have a, uh, an honest degree. Yeah, an honours degree, oh, sorry, an undergraduate degree uh, with this uh, cumulative average. Uh, it's usually in 65 or 70 percent uh, range. Uh, and then yeah, when we get onto the graduate program shortly, uh, we'll talk a bit, bit more about what the options within that are. Awesome. And also just to clarify for our international audience members, of course, uh, any cum cumulative averages with regards to admissions are the Canadian equivalent. So uh, once you actually apply to Lakehead, our admissions teams are then able to do that conversion on our end to see the admissibility based on those conversions. And so uh, moving on, just like you had said, talking about those graduate programs, um, we do have a Master's of Education as well as the Joint PhD in Education Studies. Um, so I'll pass it over to uh, Dr. Melville to chat about both of those programs. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, so the Master's of Education uh, is available both in Aurelia and uh, in Thunder Bay and also online. Uh, we have a number of uh, students who are completing this uh, online. Uh, especially in China, where we've worked uh, with uh, Maple Leaf school systems to provide professional learning for uh, their teachers, a lot of whom are actually our uh, alumni. So with the Masters of Education, uh, this came up earlier, so it's actually 10 courses. Uh, now, there are three different strands that you can uh, take with this. Uh, if, you, if you choose the coursework strand, then you just follow through with the 10 courses. Uh, at most, people tend to uh, do three courses in a semester and so yes you would be able to finish it in four semesters 
but that would depend on things like uh, what commitments you have for work or family or whatever. Most people take, you know, two is more common for people to uh, complete it within the, within the two years. Uh, if you choose to do a portfolio program, then you actually do eight courses and then uh, the other two courses uh, are where you produce your portfolio. And the portfolio is really a, a product which you work with a supervisor to develop. And this is usually used by teachers who are currently in classrooms or in administration, uh, which they can then use within their school. Uh, we've also had people uh, who work with uh, health units, for example, who uh, produce products which they use in their work. So it's really quite broad uh, as to how uh, those products are developed. And finally, if you're looking at pursuing uh, a doctorate at some point, or you, you'd like to write a thesis in education, uh, then the thesis route is also available. You take six courses and then work with a, a supervisor uh, to complete a, a thesis, uh, which is an ex um, examined by by uh, other academics in other universities. Uh, so a, a range of uh, strategies there to complete the master's program. Most people go with the coursework program, but uh, a number of people do follow through with the portfolios and uh, thesis routes as well. Uh, within the master's, there's actually three, uh, sorry, four specializations. Uh, one, you can do a master's in education studies. Uh, which is a, a fairly general degree, or you can specialise in areas such as environmental education, uh, indigenous uh, education and education for change, which includes uh, work in the area of social justice, which is uh, incredibly important. Uh, and so yeah, for information on the master's program, again, uh, have a look at the education webpage uh, and have a look under graduate studies and research, and that will give you all the information uh, for that program. The Joint PhD in Education Studies uh, is actually unique uh, across or in Ontario because it's actually run in collaboration with Brock and Windsor Universities. Uh, and so the way that works uh, is uh, you enroll, uh, you do two uh, residency requirements over uh, two summers, and then the uh, the rest of the coursework uh, is completed with uh, in various subjects that are, that are offered online. And then the final part of it is you work with a supervisor and a committee to write a, uh, a doctoral thesis, which usually comes in around 100,000 100, words. Uh, most people are looking at taking you know, four to five years to complete this degree. Uh, but as we said, it is offered uh, in collaboration with, with Brock and Windsor. Uh, and so we can actually draw on the expertise of those two institutions as well. And, and so again, there are various uh, strands within that program. You can have a look at educational leadership and administration. Uh, you can look at uh, pedagogy and you can also look at uh, social justice related uh, areas as well. Awesome, very interesting to hear about the different, very unique um, specializations and of course, very relevant in the times right now. Um, and speaking a bit of, about some of the program highlights now, moving on, I'll flip over to the questions to see. Looks like we don't have anything right now. If you do have questions, we have 15 minutes left on today's webinar. Um, so certainly submit those questions, uh, but I won't stop from moving on to our program highlights. Um, speaking about some of our offerings, so there's 105 days of placement within uh, the undergraduate programs. Uh, I'll pass over to Dr. Melville to speak about those placements and some of the partners that we have. I know that we are partnered with over 50 school boards it's, uh, within itself to uh, provide these placements. So it's very interesting to see these students going out and getting the hands-on experience and being guided by teachers that are truly in classrooms right now. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, so the way the placements work is uh, uh, starting the fall semester, then we have nine weeks of classes either in uh, Aurelia or Thunder Bay. And then we, we actually send people out to work uh, for five weeks uh, in schools. Uh, if you're at the uh, Aurelia campus, then you stay fairly close to the Aurelia campus. And if you're at Thunder Bay, you stay fairly close to the Thunder Bay campus. Uh, for the simple reason we like to keep people close because you know things do go wrong uh, and when they do go wrong then it's uh, 
better if you're close and so you can be helped and then uh, you know, work out what's happened and what can be done to improve. Because one of the things that we uh, do stress is that uh, we're committed to uh, our students' success. And, and so we, we take that very seriously and put lots of supports in place. Uh, and a number of people uh, do struggle on placement because it is an entirely new experience. You're going from being a student uh, for the last four or five years to being both a student and a teacher. And so we, you know, we do we do recognise the struggles that that uh, involve, and so we have the supports ready to help people. Uh, in the second semester, come back in the January, uh, again, nine weeks of classes, and then again, another five weeks of placement. Uh, again, staying close to uh, a really old Thunder Bay. Uh, in, in second year, the third placement can be anywhere in Ontario. And so if uh, you're looking at uh, studying with us and you're from the GTA, uh, you can actually go back uh, and, and be close to home for, for your third placement. Uh, if you want to go somewhere else within Ontario, that's fine as well. And we organise all the placements and so you don't have to go hunting around for them. Uh, we, we do all the legwork there. Uh, then if uh, people have been successful in the first three placements, then the fourth placement really does open up a range of opportunities. Uh, and so at the fourth placement, uh, we have you know, the usual in-school placement, which is again, it's another five weeks, uh, we also have alternative placements uh, because there are a large number of organisations which have an education function but aren't actually schools. And so uh, the last few years we've had people working at the uh, uh, Royal Ontario Museum, the Royal Botanical Gardens. Uh, we had a person who this year was supposed to go to the International Wolf Education Centre in Eli in Minnesota, um, but because of the pandemic uh, that was, that was cancelled. Uh, we've had people work with boys and girls clubs uh, and so if if there's an area of interest uh, for you then let us know and then we can arrange that. Uh, we also organise uh, placements in various northern communities, um, places like Attawapiskat, uh, Pekanjikum and so on and uh, because these schools have a, a desperate need for teachers and so we, we work with uh, the education authorities there and each year a number of our people go up north and a number actually get offered jobs uh, through those placements. And the, the third option is uh, our international placements. Now this year they were put on hold uh, because of the pandemic, uh, but we have uh, in the past organised to send people to China, as you can see there. Uh, we've sent people to the United Kingdom, uh, England and Scotland in particular. And this year we were actually, we had actually worked with a school in uh, Malaysia, uh, down in Johor, and also in uh, St. Martin in the Caribbean. And we had people lined up to go there, but unfortunately that didn't come off. Uh, and so we are looking at further international placements uh, in the coming years. Uh, so we have a question. Uh, in Beard, my teaching subjects were English and general science. Do I uh, do I have to take same teachables or can I choose environmental science instead of English? Uh, yes, as long as you have the uh, prerequisites uh, for environmental science, um, yes. And so if you wanted to make environmental science your first teachable, you would need the uh, five FCEs in uh, environmental science courses. Again, if you go to our uh, web page, uh, you will actually see which science courses count towards uh, environmental science and then you would need another three FCEs of general science courses. So yes, that could be arranged. Awesome. Uh, but back, back to you, Jordan. Perfect. Thank you so much. So then I know uh, this kind of highlights uh, the common misconception that when you graduate out of the Faculty of Education that your only role your only career opportunity is going to be a teacher. Um, and so we, we've compiled a list and we've worked with our alumni, of course, to see what they've been doing, where they've been going. Um, and so here on the screen now is a list of kind of where we've seen our graduates going and also new opportunities that are available. And I also think this speaks directly to the, the new um, alternative methods in your fourth placement within the consecutive education program or the professional part of your program is that um, you aren't necessarily only put into a school environment like uh, Dr. Melville said that 
students are participating in uh, museums. And I know that you said that there is a unique opportunity where a student was going to Minnesota, um, but of course that has been postponed or canceled at this point. Uh, but I think that's a good segue into the opportunities and the, the, the variety of career paths. Um, on the screen here, Dr. Melville, uh, could you highlight some of the, the more unique ones or some that you've seen our recent graduates going to at least? Uh, yeah, th th this list is by no means exhaustive. Uh, and so uh, th these are the ones which you know, we've put up there. But if you have a look at the Education Exchange newsletter, um, again, you can go back to the, uh, the website and just put in Education Exchange. Uh, you know, we do keep tra track of a lot of our alumni and every, every issue we, we actually ask people uh, to contribute their stories and what they're doing. And, and so we're, you know, we have people uh, who, or one person in particular comes to mind who actually works for uh, Maple Leaf Sports. Uh, and she's in charge of uh, their education program. Um, it's, she describes it as her, her dream job um, because she came to the education program knowing she didn't really want to work in schools, but thought that these, the skills which she can pick up in an education program, you know, working with people, uh, you know, learning how to teach people, and not all learning occurs in schools, um, would be beneficial. And so she's actually, you know, works with Maple Leaf uh, Sports and Entertainment to develop uh, their education programs. Uh, we have people who are teaching in, in the Caribbean, um, Yes, they teach in classrooms, but they've also set up a number of, of uh, extracurricular activities within their school. And so you know, they set up a, a scuba club, which uh, was incredibly popular. And one of our people was actually going to go to that school uh, this past year, but that, that got canceled. Uh, we have people who have established uh, home tutoring companies uh, in, in England. Uh, we've had a number of people who have gone on to, uh, to do further research. Uh, and a number of our uh, uh, international students uh, have actually ended up uh, rising quite quickly in international schools uh, around the world. Uh, because one of the, the major opportunities which is opening up at the moment is actually in international schools and uh, Lakin International uh, has a lot of contacts there. But international schools, uh, especially in the Middle East uh, and Southeast Asia, uh, are very keen on hiring Canadian uh, education graduates because they're seen as being uh, adaptable and uh, are very highly regarded by the profession. And so we have kept in contact with a number of people who work in international schools. Uh, and one is now a principal in Namibia and one is uh, a subject department chair in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, so really, uh, with an education degree, it's basically where do you want to go and what do you want to do? And so yeah, uh, the, these opportunities exist, but certainly don't be limited in thinking what else you can do uh, with a, an education degree from Lakehead. Certainly. And thank you for covering uh, some of what we've already discussed with the, the, the span of our alumni and the reach that we have globally within that alumni group. Um, obviously, it's great to hear that they've risen quite quickly to some of these uh, um, more, I, I don't want to say important positions, but um, they've risen to positions of higher power to then oversee larger, larger departments and chair some of these departments too. Um, so chatting a bit about some of our outstanding alumni, we have uh, Sadaf who is a graduate of the Masters of Education and she's from India. So we actually, we um, had a conversation with her and we, we chatted about her Lakehead experience um, and some of the notes that we got from her were the fact that she was so um, proud to be a Lakehead graduate and then she really um, was impressed with the high standard of education that Leica was able to provide while also still providing a very affordable um, tuition rate but also living costs within both Thunder Bay and Aurelia. Um, I know that Sadaf was a graduate of the Thunder Bay campus um, but it speaks to the fact that even though um, our education program is like Dr. Melville mentioned accredited um, and that accreditation is good for seven years once again um, it's still we are able to provide that same standard of education at, a, at an affordable rate for our students. 
Um, another thing that she mentioned is that um, our educational opportunities were able to expand uh, her experiences um, as well as high, high class education at the same time. So that hands on experience while still tying in a very strong academic side. Um, of course, her focal is on the screen. So um, I encourage you to take a, a read through that briefly. Um, we definitely have more uh, alumni features through that education exchange uh, newsletter. So like Dr. Melville has mentioned, if you visit lakehead.ca and you go to the search function at the very top of the page, um, you can search education exchange. All of our previous newsletters are there. And uh, to reiterate something that Dr. Melville mentioned, that's been five years now in the making and uh, new issues are released every January, May and September, I believe it is. Um, and so the most recent was just last month. So there's some really interesting stories in there. I've already read through it myself. I got the email saying that it was being released. I, I took that right away and I read it. And the stories were very interesting to learn about where, uh, once again, our alumni are around the world and some of the articles and some of our faculty members. I know that also in that is some of the publishings that we've seen come out of uh, our professors and faculty members. <clears throat> So, uh, oh, John, we have a question come up. Uh, sure. what, is, what are the career opportunities for finishing led for change in environmental and sustainability development? Uh, that, that's actually a pretty big question. Um, I think with the breadth of that question, the fact that it really, it opens so many doors. Of course, it's a specialization within the Masters of Education. Um, and of course, it, it allows our students to kind of focus in on uh, where their passions lie. Um, but I know that it won't also necessarily narrow your, your career paths after that. It's, it's still a master's degree and at that it's an Ontario and Canadian master's degree, which like Dr. Melville has mentioned is is highly regarded and recognized around the world. And also to add on to that, I've met up with a several number of students uh, over the past month, a few months on Instagram Live, where we've chatted about their educational experience uh, and kind of what their favorite aspects are within the program. Uh, most recently, I met up with uh, Yi Chen, who is an education and chemistry student who came from uh, the Maple Leaf School system in China. And she said that uh, one of the main reasons she selected Lakehead was because Lakehead University's uh, education programs are held with such high regard back home in China for her. Um, so that was able to help her narrow down that decision and really uh, focus in on what she wanted to study. So I think to, to come back to this question, even though it is a specialization within the Masters of Education and it does allow you to focus in on maybe a passion you have within that field, um, it doesn't certainly narrow the career paths that you'll get out of that. Thank you, John. That actually gave me time to think about, uh, about an answer. So, yeah, um, one of the key things Jordan just said was, you know, what, what is your passion? Because that's actually going to drive uh, what sort of career opportunities you'd be looking for. Uh, the other part about that is, of course, it's going to drive, uh, drive you to be successful within the MED program because uh, it is it is a commitment for several years. Uh, graduate study is is quite different from undergraduate study, and so uh, if people know why they are pursuing a particular degree, then of course that makes all the difference. And then of course uh, the faculty is is there to help you uh, achieve you know what you want to achieve. Um, the the other part of the answer is uh, it's not just the it's not just the content which you learn through something like a master's program. Uh, it's actually the skills because all all students in the MA program uh, do need to take some research methods courses uh, and research uh, is incredibly important because through research then either you can uh, develop a uh, you know, research program uh, which you know, gathers data it also gives you the ability to read critically and, and now more than ever when a lot of expertise is being challenged um, across the world uh, the ability to be able to read information critically, uh, judge the value of it and see what the evidence behind it is, is, is really vital um, if we're going to uh, have people uh, make informed decisions. And, and so skills like 
uh, you know, critical thinking, uh, being able to judge uh, the quality of evidence, and also being able to communicate clearly to a variety of audiences. Um, these are all very important skills which the MED uh, program uh, would certainly take to a higher level. Uh, of course, they're also going to be developed in the undergraduate programs as well. Um, but as I said earlier, it's not just the, the content which we do uh, within the faculty, it's also the skills which go uh, with that content, which make people effective educators in, in the, uh, the broadest sense of the world, word. Awesome. Well, thank you again for uh, answering that question specifically. I'll begin uh, my wrap-up processes for today. And once again, to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Um, before you head out, I want to encourage you to connect with us on Facebook. So we are on Facebook, Lakehead University and Trash Hill is our page. Actually, within that page, we have started a group for the incoming class of 2020. Um, so if you head over there and you check out that group, you have to fill out a few answers or a few questions, pardon me, um, with regards to kind of when you'll be joining Lakehead, what program you'll be joining with, and then you'll need to provide your full name and ID. So your Lakehead ID, which can be found at the top of your letter of acceptance. Um, just so that we can verify, you know, we're, we're curating that group to all incoming students. And then again, we're on Instagram, Lakehead International is our handle. Every Tuesday and Thursday, we do an Instagram Live with a current student. Next week on Tuesday, we'll be meeting up with Carla, who is a student from Mexico, and she'll be, uh, she is pursuing her chemistry undergrad. And then the following Thursday, we'll also be meeting up with Vishwa, a business student, uh, and we'll chat about her involvement in Lakehead's Enactus Club. On Twitter, we are at Lakehead INTL and YouTube, Lakehead University, with two playlists dedicated to international audiences. So Lakehead International is our general playlist where you can learn more about the university as well as hear about student testimonials and student experiences. Lakehead International Lives is, of course, where all of our webinar recordings end up. Um, this one today with Dr. Melville will be online uh, within a few hours. So if you missed anything, if you had to head out early, you want to watch it again or listen to a certain question again, certainly you can over, head over there uh, in uh, just some time now. For those of you joining in China, we're also on Weibo, WeChat, and Yoku. Um, and we have regular content on there as well. Uh, that will help you learn more about Lakehead University. And last but not least, we do encourage you, if you are able to uh, visit us at lakehead.ca forward slash tours, you can actually complete a virtual campus tour. So you, you can explore the facilities, the classrooms, the um, surrounding nature and beauty of campus, both in Thunder Bay and Aurelia. But ideally, it's from the comfort of your own home. So you get to do it at your own pace. There's no appointments necessary. You can start today for 20 minutes or so and then wrap up uh, later this weekend or even next week. Um, so once again, it's totally at your own pace and it is done virtually with no appointments necessary. So all you have to do is head over to lakehead.ca forward slash tours. So once again, I want to thank uh, the audience members for joining us, but also to Dr. Melville for joining us. Uh, I know you have a very busy schedule and lots on your plate right now to uh, finalize the learning plans for our upcoming fall semester. Uh, so thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to join us and chat about the Faculty of Education. Um, it was very beneficial uh, for myself learning about it, but I know, of course, more importantly for our applicants and prospects to uh, hear directly from you about uh, the opportunities that we're able to provide here at Lakehead. No, th thank you for the opportunity, Jordan. It's been great. No worries. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So once again, thanks again for joining us. I'll head out now and hopefully we'll see you on Monday. If uh, you still haven't applied to Lakehead, we'll be going over that application. Or if you know maybe a friend or a family member who's looking to join Lakehead as well, you can still apply for undergraduate and graduate programs. But on Monday, we'll dive into the undergrad side. So bye for now and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next time.